Okay, welcome to the multiplier, a really important concept in macroeconomics. So, have a quick drink of water and then off we go. Very nice. Okay, what is the multiplier? And it's simply this idea that an initial change in expenditure or an injection into the economy can result in a larger increase in national income. Okay, so it's a bit like if you give a job to 10 people who are unemployed, they will then spend money and that will create extra employment. They will then spend their cash and that will provide extra employment. Okay, that's a simple little approach to the multiplier. Um, let, let's look at a little example, it's a bit like that. If we give um, John here a hundred pound, so that's an increase, that's an injection into the economy of a hundred pound. What's John going to do with that? Well, John is going to spend it. Say he happens to spend half of it, because he likes to save. So he'll spend fifty pound. That's fifty pound, and John will give that money, say, to Janet, in a shop for um, a good or a service. So Janet now gets an additional fifty pound. What does Janet do with that? Well, she likewise might save half of it. So she saved twenty-five and spend the other twenty-five, um, say, going to see Matilda at the hairdresser or something like that. So she spends twenty-five pound, and Matilda gets an extra twenty-five pound she didn't have before. And then she then spends it, um, say, in the bar and has a few drinks. Um, and then the barkeeper gets £12.50. And then the barkeeper says, I know, I need to get some sweets from the shop tomorrow. So then they spend that £6.25. And this goes on and on and on. And so it, it keeps circulating around the circular flow. If we have an injection here, say an investment or government expenditure or exports, an additional, an addition to the circular flow, that will keep on going round, and the only thing that will reduce it is the withdrawals, the withdrawals here, saving, taxation, and imports. Okay, here we just looked at saving, of course. So what happens with the initial hundred pounds? It keeps going round the economy, but gradually less and less as passed on, and you end up altogether with two hundred pounds. Okay, altogether you end up with two hundred pounds, and this is the multiplier process. Um, an initial increase, say, of £100, multiplied by 2, becomes £200. And the multiplier here, we see, is 2, as in this case here. So you start off, just to recap, initial 100 and you end up with £200. And we've explained the process about how that happens. Now, what, what happens, for instance, if um, you have an initial injection of £100, but we saved only a tenth? and we didn't buy any imports and we weren't taxed, then £90 will be passed on. And then, again, you save a tenth of that and then you pass on £81. And you save a tenth of that and you pass on £73. And the process keeps going on and on. Uh, and what happens with the initial £100? You actually end up with £1,000 altogether when the withdrawals are only a tenth, when they're 10%. Yeah? And so the multiplier effect is much bigger then. So the key thing that determines the multiplier effect is the, um, the marginal, what's called the marginal propensity to withdraw. In other words, it's the marginal propensity to save plus the marginal propensity to tax plus the marginal propensity to import. I'll come back to that. So the more the withdrawals from the circular flow, the less the multiplier process. Okay, um, so there's two formulae formulae really to work out the multiplier. One is of course the standard one, that a change in, in injections brings about a bigger change in income uh, when multiplied by the multiplier. Okay, so if we arrange that formula, K would equal of course a change in uh, income divided by a change in injections. Okay, so an extra £100 brings about £200 as a multiplier process of two, as in our first example. Okay, so there's this second formula, um, which simply says that the multiplier equals 1 over the, the withdrawals, the marginal propensities to withdraw in the economy, which are the MPS, the MPT, and the MPN. Okay, and the bigger those, the less the multiplier effect. Okay, um, this formula here and this here are the key things um, expressed mathematically that you need to know about the multiplier. Um, what is the MPS? It's simply the amount you save as a proportion of your extra income. So you give someone £10 and they save £1, the MPS would be 0 
the MPT, if you give someone an extra £10 and they taxed £2, um, it will be 0.2. So we've got 0 0.1, 0 0.2. And let's do marginal price to import. Say um, people spend an extra £2 on import, so every £10 they get, okay, that will be 0 0.2. So we add those up, we get 1 over 0 0.5, okay, which is a multiplier effect of 2 in the economy. Okay, so the size of the multiplier depends on the total marginal capacity you withdraw, okay, which is the MPS plus the MPT plus the MPM. Okay. Um, the multiplier effect, of course, doesn't happen immediately. It takes time to have an effect. And this definition, this formula, and this formula, okay, these are the key things you need to know about the multiplier. Now, if we want to go into a bit more detail, and I'll go the other way. What we actually have is the multiplier process if you like a little bit of basic maths, a bit more basic maths, is really you have a convergence series that, um, um, or a, geomet a geometric uh, series that is converging towards zero, okay? For all of those of you that like a bit of maths. So let's say we have an initial injection of the economy of 100 million, okay? Um, then we multiply that by 0 0.9, okay? So say we have a marginal price to withdraw of 0.1, and we add that to then 90 million plus times 0 0.9, and we add 81 million times 0 0.9, 72 million, uh, 0.9 million times 0 0.9, 65 million times 0 0.9, and this goes on and on, okay? And what you realize, of course, the initial 100 million injection into the economy, okay, results overall in, yes, 1,000 million, okay? And the withdrawals have increased by 100. That is because the MPW was 0.1. If the MPW was 0.5, then the multiplier effect, of course, would be 2. Okay. Um, so, for example, if the government has a new capital project, such as a new railway, okay, then that would result in a bigger increase in national income, depending on the marginal capacity we withdraw. So an interesting question is, what would it actually be for the UK economy? So you, you should maybe look this up and have a think about it now. But if we work it out, for the UK economy, okay, and so we've got the MPS is pretty low. We, like, we don't really like saving much. That's probably 0.05 in the UK economy. The MPT um, is probably about 0.4 for the UK economy because the government takes um, about 40% GDP in taxation, if you think of VAT as well as income and the marginal propensity to import is pretty high, uh, could be about 0 0.3, okay? So then we've got, um, we add that up, we've basically got um, 0 0.3 plus 0 0.8 plus 0 0.05, so it's 1 over um, 0 0.75, okay? Which you find becomes 1.3 recurring, which really isn't particularly large, um, number for the multiplier. Some estimates put the UK multiplier at large at 1.5, 1.75, okay? Um, but it's still a significant effect, okay? And remember it can be negative as well as positive. So you could have a fall in investment, okay? Say um, there's a lack of business confidence, there's a fall of investment of say 100 billion, okay? If the multiplier effect was say uh, 2, then there will be a, a fall in GDP, a national output eventually, of 200 uh, billion. Yeah? So the multiplier effect, remember, can work negatively as well as positively. Okay, so I hope that was useful. Remember the definition and remember these uh, two formula here. Thank you very much.